Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where popular answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. And first, we welcome back Elizabeth and Christina. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final, and this is Elizabeth and Christina's second chance. Remind us how you did. We got to the second round, but it was the international car registrations that caught us out. They were tough. They were. Dear, oh, dear. What are you hoping will come up today, Christina? Um, I'm really keen on books and literature, because I read quite a lot, so... That's probably my favourite topic. Books and literature. We haven't had yeah. those for a while, actually. Nice literary mm. question. Round two today. Round two, <laughs> Christina. Literature. Mind you, it's always tricky you say that. <laughs> you, know, you know, you get one that you don't know, you feel more of a fool than if it's your oh, weakness. Oh, I know. I you, know. Can't, you cannot go back now, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, no, no that's going to be your... Yes, you're going to uh... be the champion of that round. Oh, sure. she's going to be awesome. Be amazing. <laughs> Mark and Tessa, welcome to you next. How do you two I... know each other? Um, we met about sort of 13 years ago. We were at different uh, universities, but... Um, we uh, both did debating at university and we used to meet at uh, the sort of national competitions. Very good. Um, Mark, what, what, what are your specialist subjects? Well, we're both quite good on movies. Um, I work in politics, so I probably should know a little bit about that. OK. Right, yeah, you really should do. What do you do, Mark? In uh, I work as a researcher for a member of the Scottish Parliament. Blimey, yeah, you really can't afford to let anything slip through <laughs> your fingers, can you? <laughs> Thanks, Mark and Tessa. Very best of luck to the pair of you. And next, we welcome back Paul and Yvonne. You were on the show last time. This is their second chance to reach the pointless final. Remind us how you did, Paul. We were undone in the first round, strictly undone. by, yeah, yeah, by a combination of John Sargent and Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> we, we just didn't know. Remind us what you do, Paul and Yvonne. I'm a part-time handyman. Very good. And Yvonne, how about you? I work as a volunteer, serves as assistant at a zoo. Do you work with the animals? I do. Part of my job is, is actually looking after a collection of animals, the volunteer collection of animals, anything from uh, ferrets to cockroaches. Um, I was really hoping ferrets was going to be the bottom of the scale. <laughs> uh, OK. Very best of luck to you, Paul and Yvonne. It's lovely to have you back. Finally, we welcome Josh and Rob. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, Alexander, uh, me and Josh both go to Newcastle University, so we met through there, and we're both studying geography. Both so, studying geography. Yeah, both. That's right. Okay, so apart from geography and possibly Newcastle, um, <laughs> what are your what are your strong suits? Um, sport is pretty good. Pretty confident with that. Sport, football, really. Football. Yeah. I'm into politics, I'd say, and uh, sort of film. But anyway, we've got some film buffs over there. So okay. keep my uh, other sort of uh, strong subjects closer to my, <laughs> to my chest. You know? OK, very, very good. Well, we'll be finding more out about all of you throughout the show. There is only one person left for me to introduce. He cocks a snook at popularity and wallows in the obscure. He is my pointless friend. You do. You do, though. I've seen you. He's Richard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. How are you? I, I'm, I'm fine. That's good. For once, we've actually got some questions that uh, people have asked for. Normally, we just do things like car registration plates, but uh, <laughs> we've got sport, we've got literature, we've got film, so a little bit of something for everyone, I think. We've got a t couple of returning pairs. Paul and Yvonne, we didn't see much of, did we, because of no. Paul's avowed dislike of uh, Strictly Come Dancing, which uh, does them great credit. <laughs> uh, and Elizabeth and Christina are also back. I did rather better, but I suspect both of them will be looking to go all the way. But it uh, should be a very, very good show, I think. It's got two very bright uh, new pairs as well. <clears throat> very good, thank you. Well, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, of course, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £10,750. <laughs> <clears throat> right, let's play Pointless. OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so be very careful that's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Film stars. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? 
And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the first question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Michael Douglas films as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Michael Douglas has received an acting credit, including uh, as, as a voice artist. As always, we don't accept TV films, short films, documentaries, things where he's played himself, or films where he has been uncredited. So any Michael Douglas film. And that's up to the start of 2011. You all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon, Christina and Elizabeth, you get to go first. Christina. Um, you a fan? Someone, no, I would say not particularly. Mm. I've, I've got a a couple of ideas. Um, I think I'm going to have to say Wall Street. OK, Wall Street. Wall Street, let's see if it's right and if it is. Let's see how many people said Wall Street. <laughs> 42, that's not bad at all, Christina. Wall Street, Richard. Yeah, Wall Street from 1987. Michael Douglas won an Oscar for his portrayal as Gordon Gecko. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Tessa. Okay. Tessa, Michael Douglas films. Okay. Have you got a few? In I know your a mind? few more obvious ones, um, but I've got a couple that might be a bit more obscure. I know Mark's told me to play safe whatever I do, but <laughs> I'm tempted to go for my obscure ones. So he's told you to play safe in whatever. You... Has he watched the game? I think he doesn't trust trust me. Oh, I see, I see. Um, but I'm going to defy our team tactics. Well done, well done. I think he was in a movie called Coma. Coma. Let's see if Michael Douglas was indeed in Coma, and if he was, let's see how many people said it. Coma. It's right. Well done. Very well done, Tessa. That's a fabulous answer. It scores you one point. One point for Coma, Richard. Yeah, great answer. Well played, Tessa. And an object lesson for Mark as well, <laughs> to trust Tessa. Yeah, from 1978, directed by Michael Crichton. Thanks, Richard. So then, Yvonne. Yvonne, Michael Douglas films. Not good. Really? <laughs> no. Ah, uh, it's a struggle. Um, hard Rain. Hard Rain. OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. You're saying hard rain. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said hard rain. Oh, Yvonne! <laughs> Unfortunately, that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Bad luck, Yvonne. Richard? Yeah, I'm afraid uh, hard rain was uh, 1998. Morgan Freeman and Christian Slater. No Michael Douglas. Bad luck, Yvonne. Rob? <laughs> Yep. Michael Douglas films. Yeah. Now, you're quite good on film. I'm not on this particular not on category. This particular yeah. category. Mm, You've seen any Michael Douglas came. films? I remember seeing him in one film, which I cannot remember the name of. Uh, <laughs> okay. So that's good. Um, not very really helpful, but I'm going to guess where it was based and hope maybe that was what it was called and go with Manhattan. OK, well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Manhattan. Good luck, Rob. Bad luck, Rob. It's going to take more than good luck, I'm afraid. That is incorrect, and it scores you the maximum of 100 points, Richard. Yeah, sorry, Rob. The bad news is that's a, it's a Woody Allen film without Michael Douglas, but the good news is you've really cheered up Yvonne. <laughs> 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 OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. On one point, Tessa. Fantastic. Then we come up a little bit to Christina and Elizabeth on 42. Not a bad score, given the context, because then... Yvonne and Paul and Rob and Josh are on 100. So the real contest is going to be between Josh and Paul in the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, remember, we're looking for Michael Douglas films. Josh, Michael Douglas films, what are you thinking? A film buff, but not on this. This is a... My, my heart sank. What I'm type gonna... of films do you like, Josh? Well, James Bond. Why couldn't you have asked for Roger Moore? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to have to go for an educated guess. And I'm going to go for a film called Out of Africa. You are the high scorers on 100 mm. points. There's no red line for you. No. Let's see if Out of Africa is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Out of Africa. Oh. 
bad luck. Unfortunately, that is an incorrect answer, which means you also score the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to 200. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Josh. Uh, out of Africa was with uh, Robert Redford, uh, I'm afraid. But again, the good news is you've cheered up Paul. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Paul. Yes. The high scorers are Josh and Rob on 200. If you can score 99 or less with this answer, 99 or less, you are through to the next round. When you asked the question, my mind went blank, but I didn't know at all until Yvonne said hard rain, and that reminded me of a film called Black Rain. OK, Black Rain. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. There is your red line, just below the pink line. Let's see if Black <laughs> Rain can get you down below it. Well done. Uh, that was huge. Very well done indeed, Paul. Very good, low-scoring answer. Scores you three, takes your total up to 103. Black Rain, Richard. Yeah, well played, Paul. I assume that was a film you were thinking of, it Yvonne. Was, yeah. Michael Douglas and Andy Garcia play uh, New York cops, and they take on their Yakuza, the Japanese mafia. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Mark, whatever happens, you are through to the next round. Why not look on this as an opportunity to dazzle us with a pointless Michael Douglas film and add 250 quid to the jackpot? OK, um, well, I've got two in my head that I'm weighing up, which I think are relatively obscure. So it's a question of which one of those I pick. So I'm going to go with one that I actually went to the cinema to see, but it didn't do so well, and it's called The Game. There's no red line for you. You're through whatever happens. Let's see, though, if The Game is right, and if it is, let's see if Mark has found a pointless answer. It's right. It's a great answer, Mark. Sadly, that wasn't pointless, but brilliant low score. Seven takes your total to eight. Richard? Yeah, well done, Mark. Not as good as Tessa, of course, but uh, that's what we come to expect from Tessa. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, um, it's quite a good film, the game, done by um, David Fincher. Very good, thank you. Now then, Elizabeth and Christina, you're on 42. Doesn't matter what you score, Elizabeth. No, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm not a fan either, though I, I have got a couple in my head, so hopefully... Very good. It won't be wrong. Um, I'm going to say Romancing the Stone. Romancing the Stone. Yes. So let's see, is Romancing the Stone right? If it is, let's see how many people said it. Romancing the Stone. It's right. <laughs> 17. Brilliant answer. <laughs> Takes your total up to 59. Richard, Romancing the Stone. Yeah, Romancing the Stone from uh, 1984, one of, his, uh, one of his most popular films. Let's take a look at the, uh, the pointless answers. There were, there were quite a few. Uh, the American President, uh, which is written by Aaron Sorkin, who went on to create The West Wing. Uh, the China Syndrome that he was in with Jack Lemmon. Uh, the comedy One Night at McCool's. Those are all pointless answers. It Runs in the Family, where he starred with both of his parents, Kirk and Diana, and his son, Cameron. The In-Laws, The Ghost and the Darkness, which is a movie about hunting lions. Beyond a Reasonable Zout was a pointless answer. Napoleon and Samantha and Solitary Man, all pointless answers, so very well done if you said any of those at home. Let's take a look at the, uh, the worst answers that uh, they could have given. These are the ones that the most of our 100 people said. We've just heard the, uh, the third most, which is Romancing the Stone, 17. Then Basic Instinct, of course, on 19, and we've already heard the top answer as well. You gave that, uh, Christina, Wall Street on 42. OK, thanks very much, Richard. So, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, Josh and Rob. Two spectacular high scores there. Well, at least we didn't embarrass ourselves. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah. Josh and Rob, well, you will be back next time when I'm sure we will see a great deal more of you, but thank you very much for playing Meanwhile. You've been brilliant. Great contestant. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs can make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving at the end of this round. Your category for round two this afternoon is... Literature. There you are, Christina. <laughs> Literature. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Yeah. OK, so our round two question this afternoon concerns 
American novels and their writers. American novels and their writers. In this round, we're about to show you a list of titles of classic American novels. We asked 100 people to tell us who wrote them. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you six novels on each pass. Uh, the more obscure the novel, the fewer points you're going to score. If you give us an incorrect answer, you'll score 100 points. Thank you very much, Richard. So remember, we are looking for the authors of these classic American novels. Here we are. We have got, in our first pass, The Great Gatsby, To Kill a Mockingbird, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Atlas Shrugged, Carrie and Moby Dick. I'll read all those again. The Great Gatsby, To Kill a Mockingbird, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Atlas Shrugged, Carrie, Moby Dick. OK, so, Elizabeth, there are the novels. We are looking for the authors of these novels, and you're going to try and find the most obscure one on that board. What do you think? Um, there's three that I'm definitely sure of. Um, one that I think I know, and then the other two, I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to say Moby Dick and Herman Melville. Herman Melville. OK, well, let's see if Herman Melville is right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Herman Melville. Very well done. Nineteen. Very well done, Elizabeth. Nineteen for Herman Melville, Moby Dick. Yeah, well played, Elizabeth, from 1851. Superb. Now then, Tessa. Behind me are the American novels. I want an author for the most obscure one you can find on that board. OK, literature is among my worst subjects. However, I do recognise some of these. Um, and I know, I think, three or four that are left. Um, I'm going to go for, I think, To Kill a Mockingbird. It's might be the least common that I might know the answer to, and I think it's Harper Lee. Harper Lee, To Kill a Mockingbird, Mark nodding behind you. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew Harper Lee wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. He's right. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Not bad at all, Tessa. That scores you 20 points. Yeah, well done, Tessa, from, uh, from 1960. It's the only book she ever wrote, Harper Lee. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. <clears throat> Harper Lee, good answer, Tessa. Now then, Yvonne, we are looking for the authors of these American novels. You're the last person to have this board, so feel free to talk about all of them, if you like. I know The Great Gatsby, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and Carrie, I think. Atlas Shrugged. I don't even recognise the title, to be honest, let alone know the author, on the basis that people might forget it was F. Scott Fitzgerald rather than Scott Fitzgerald. I'm going to say F. Scott Fitzgerald for The Great Gatsby. F. Scott Fitzgerald, you're saying, for The Great Gatsby. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see if your strategic thinking has paid off. Well, it is right. How many people knew that name? 24. 24 for The Great Gatsby. Uh, yeah, the F, of course, for Francis, Francis Scott Fitzgerald, from 1925. A wonderful, wonderful novel. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. Beating all of those incredible novels is Carrie, which is Stephen King, which would have scored you 36 Ooh. points. Okay. Uh, then The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is Mark Twain, would have scored you 32. Do you know Atlas Shrugged? I don't know. There's much in the news over the American elections, because it's a, a book that's utterly loved by the American right wing. Uh, it's uh, Ayn Rand. I would have scored you four points. Very well done if you got that at home. At the shrugged. OK, thanks very much, Richard. So we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Elizabeth, the best answer in that round. You've ended up on 19, which puts Christina a little bit ahead of the game in the next pass. Then just ahead of you, Tessa and Mark on 20. Then a little bit out in front, Yvonne and Paul on 24. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more classic American novels on the board. Here they are. We've got The Catcher in the Rye, The Hunt for Red October, Gone with the Wind, The Da Vinci Code, A Farewell to Arms, Catch-22. I'll read those again. The Catcher in the Rye, The Hunt for Red October, Gone with the Wind, The Da Vinci Code, A Farewell to Arms, Catch-22. Remember, we are looking for the authors, and you are trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Paul. 
I'm going to go straight in with Catch-22 and Joseph Heller. You are our high scorers on 24. Mm -hmm. You want to be scoring as little as possible with Joseph Heller. No red line for you because you are the high scorers, I say. OK, Joseph Heller. Well done, that's right. Down it goes. Very good. Our lowest score so far. 17 for Joseph Heller. Takes your total up to 41. Richard. Uh, yeah, well done, Paul. It's going to be a very, very close round, isn't it? From 1961, catch 22. OK, so the high scorers now are Paul and Yvonne on 41. Mark, you are on 20. If you can score 20 or less, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. I'm thinking I should have gone first because I knew all of the ones on the last board. Ah. I only know a couple on here, one of which has already gone. So, sorry. Um, I'm going to go for... As Tessa did, I think this was the only novel they wrote. I'm going to go for The Catcher in the Rye and J.D. Salinger. J.D. Salinger for Catcher in the Rye. OK, here is your red line. It's quite low, but then it's quite a low-scoring round. If you can score 20 or less with Salinger, you are through to the next round. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said J.D. Salinger for The Catcher in the Rye. It's correct. <laughs> 24 that scores you and it takes your total up to 44 Richard uh, yeah from 1951 the famously reclusive JD Salinger he did write other things actually and there are there are apparently 15 unpublished novels sitting in a safe which may see the light of day one day be nice wouldn't it mm. OK, thanks very much. Right. So, remember, we are looking for the authors of these classic American novels. Now then, Christina, we have a contest on our hands here. The high scorers are Mark and Tessa on 44. You are on 19. If you want to stay in the game, you have to score 24 or less. You can talk us through the board. You're the last person to have this board, Christina. I wish I could remember the author of The Hunt for Red October because I think that's probably going to be the lowest one and I can't. Um, I do know the other three and so it's uh, Gone with the Wind is Margaret Mitchell, The Da Vinci Code is Dan Brown and A Farewell to Arms is Ernest Hemingway. But I, I, I'm not sure which... I, I should think Dan Brown would be the most, most popular but I'm not sure of the other two. I think I'm going to go A Farewell to Arms, Ernest Hemingway. Ernest Hemingway, A Farewell to Arms. There is your red line. If you get below that red line with Ernest Hemingway, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if Ernest Hemingway is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Good luck. It's right! Oh, well done! Well done! Ernest Hemingway scoring only 13. The lowest score in the whole round, in fact. Taking your total up to 32, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Richard? Yeah, very well played, uh, Christina. Hemingway's semi-autobiographical novel from 1929, set in, uh, set in World War I. Now, there have been some unbelievably great novels and works of literature on both of these lists. And far and away, the most popular and successful of all, mm. The Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown, which would have scored you 48 points. Mm. Uh, Gone with the Wind, quite right, Margaret Mitchell. Actually, wouldn't have made much difference if you'd said that, because it only scored 14. Yeah. Now, The Hunt for Red October, it was, it was Tom Clancy. Oh, yes. Tom I knew Clancy, I'd know it when yeah. I heard it, yeah. And actually, funny enough, the best answer on the board, yeah, just nine points. Yeah, I thought points. it would be. Very well done if you've got all 12 mm. of those at home, especially. Thank you very much. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, Mark and Tessa. How on earth? This was not meant to be at all. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It was a very, very, very low-scoring round. Literature was never going to go well for me, I think. It, uh, it was doomed from the beginning. Listen, you did incredibly well. 20 points for To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm sorry to say, though, you've ended up with a higher score, so I'm afraid we have to eliminate you. Great shame. But uh, we will see you next time, and we'll look forward to that very much. Thank you so much for playing. Thank Great. You. Great. Thank you. Of the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So very well done, Elizabeth and Christina, Paul and Yvonne. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £10,750. 
OK, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The first pair to get to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, good luck. Here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Wimbledon 2010 men's quarter finalists as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any player who reached at least the uh, quarter finals of the 2010 Wimbledon tournament. There are, you'll be amazed to learn, eight names on the list. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the singles tournament in the 2010 Wimbledon Championships. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Elizabeth and Christina, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. So we are looking for those Wimbledon 2010 men's quarter-finalists. I think that's a good one. Mm -hmm. OK, you've got one. Yes, we're going to say Thomas Burditch, I think. Thomas Burditch. Yeah. Paul and Yvonne, you can do your thinking out loud for us. You're great on tennis, aren't you? I'm not great on sport at all, so this is definitely over to Paul, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I think it's a gimme. I think we're going to have to say Roger Federer, because I can't think of his name. OK. Roger Federer. Roger Federer. Elizabeth and Christina have gone for Thomas Burditch. Let's see if that is right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Thomas Burditch. Is correct. <laughs> I think this is going to go a long way down. Very, very, very good answer, Elizabeth and Christina. Thomas Burditch, just three there. Paul and Yvonne have gone for Roger Federer. It's in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if it's right. <laughs> and if it is, let's see how many people said Roger Federer. Well, you suspected that would be a high scorer, and indeed it was. After our first question, Elizabeth and Christina are ahead 1-0. Richard? Yeah, Burditch beats Federer, and that's exactly what happened in Wimbledon as well, actually. Mm. Thomas Burditch beat uh, Roger Federer and went on to the final, where he lost to Nadal. Let's take a look at uh, all eight of them. Uh, the best answer you could have given was Yulen Shun. He was scored one point. Joe Wilfrid Sunger, two points. Thomas Burditch, three. Uh, Robin Soderling, the Swede, on four. Uh, there's Novak Djokovic on 10, Nadal, the eventual winner, with 39, Federer, 14, Andy Murray, uh, top of all, 59 points for Murray. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Paul and Yvonne, you have to win this question. Stay in the game. Easy. OK, good luck. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Simon and Garfunkel singles as they could. We're looking for any single release by Simon and Garfunkel that made it into the UK Top 40 prior to the start of 2011. Uh, where they've done double A-sides, both of those songs will count separately. Uh, we're not looking for individual tracks by Garfunkel or Simon, just Simon and Garfunkel songs in the Top 40. Very best of luck. Very best of luck. Paul and Yvonne, you go first this time. Okie dokie. We have an answer. Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound. OK. Elizabeth and Christina. Homeward Bound has gone. You can now do your discussion out loud. Well, I'm probably one of the world's greatest Simon and Garfunkel oh. fans. Oh, no! But that doesn't that necessarily make it easy, because I know all their songs, but I don't necessarily know whether they were singing. You see, you're in, the, you're in the same predicament as you were at the end of the American literature yes. round, aren't you? Yes, so Bridge Over Troubled Water and That's The Boxer. Um, El Condor Pasa, which is, yeah. the, is another song from that album, which I think, because it's a bit of a tricky name, people might not remember. Is that a single? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And Cecilia? Yeah. Um, OK, yeah. let's I'm have an answer have to... from you. Yeah, I think. I think I'm going to go for El Condor Passa. El Condor Passa. Homeward Bound, that's what Paul and Yvonne are saying. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Homeward Bound. It's right! Oh, 
16. 16. Um, El Condor Passa, Elizabeth and Christina have submitted. Christina, admittedly a lifelong fan of Simon and Garfunkel, possibly their biggest. Yes, possibly. <laughs> El Condor Passa, if you win this point, you are straight through to the final and you will be playing for that £10,750 jackpot. Good luck. El Condor Passa, is it right? If it is, how many people said it? An incorrect answer, I'm afraid, which means after two questions, it is one apiece. Richard? Yeah, not, not a single in the UK, I'm afraid. That's, uh, that's very tough luck. Let's take a look at all the answers. Uh, there's one that you, you said as well here that would have won you the point. Uh, but let's take a look at all of them. There's a side at night, 7 o'clock news, which was, uh, that was a, that was a pointless answer. Very well done if you said that. That was a double A side with Hazy Shade of Winter, which would have scored you two. America with three, I am a rock, seven. Now, you said the boxer. And the boxer would have seen you through to the final. 14 points. Homeward bound, 16. Mrs. Robinson, 25. And their only UK number one bridge over troubled water would have scored you 62 points. Yeah. There aren't actually that many singles, are there? And there's no, obviously all the album it, yeah. tracks, which I know really well, off by how I'm called. Well, that was very exciting. It's left us one all. So whoever wins this next question is through to the final and we'll be playing for that jackpot. Here is your third question. Good luck to both of you. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Democratic US presidents as they could. Yeah, we're looking for any Democratic president of the USA from 1945 through to the beginning of 2011. So essentially any Democratic president since Roosevelt. There are six names on the list. OK, Elizabeth and Christina, you go first this time. I think we're going to go with Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson. OK, Lyndon B. Johnson, you are saying. Paul and Yvonne. Let's have a look. Harry S. Truman. John F. Kennedy. Lyndon B. Johnson. Jimmy Carter. Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. I reckon Harry S. Truman, then. So we're going to say Harry S. Truman. Harry S. Truman. OK, so we have Lyndon B. Johnson, we have Harry S. Truman. Whoever wins this point, and I think it's going to be close fought, mm -hmm. is through to the final and will be playing for that massive jackpot of £10,750. OK, Elizabeth and Christina said Lyndon B. Johnson. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Lyndon B. Johnson. Seven. <laughs> Paul and Paul, what are you thinking? Seven. I'm thinking that's a good score. A good that's low a score. Good low mm. score. Mm. Harry S. Truman is what you are saying. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Good luck. Truman scores only four points. So after three questions, Paul and Yvonne are through to the final 2-1. Richard? Uh, yeah, well played, Paul and Yvonne. In fact, well played both pairs. They were the best two answers on the board, the best answers you could have gone for. Third or sixth, they took a look at how all six scored. Harry S. Truman there with four, Lyndon B. Johnson with seven. And Jimmy Carter, 25. John F. Kennedy, 33. Barack Obama, 43. And Bill Clinton right at the top there on 50. Very good head-to-head. -head. Well played, everybody. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, Elizabeth and Christina, by a whisker, it's you. What an amazing head-to-head -head that was. There was a time there we thought you were going to waltz off with that, Christina. Yes, yeah. It's, uh, Simon and yeah. Garfunkel looked very much like yeah. that was playing into your, into your hands. I think oh. you can sometimes know too much. You knew too you much? Know, know too much detail. You knew too much, exactly. I mean, a really brilliantly, brilliantly well-fought head-to-head -head round. Absolutely fantastic. Very sorry we have to be saying goodbye to you, but you have been great contestants. Thank you so much for playing. Brilliant.
But for Paul and Yvonne, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £10,750. Well, congratulations, Paul and Yvonne. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at a dizzying £10,750. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers on the show no. today. You just have to find one now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category. Mm -hmm. and you can choose from these three options. <laughs> they are American sport, UK politics, UK politics isn't it? fashion. Fashion, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm an icon. Yvonne, not so good. Um, <laughs> I'll rerun that. As you can tell, Yvonne's an icon, I'm not so good. I think we meet in the middle on UK politics, don't we? Yes. UK Pay politics. UK politics, OK. <clears throat> Let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Margaret Thatcher's cabinet as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for mm -hmm. any MP or peer who had a seat on any of the cabinets under Margaret Thatcher's premiership. OK. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £10,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Yep. Your 60 seconds start now. OK. There's Norman St. John Stevens yep. to mine. The Did Lords we... would be more... Go on. Uh, was Francis Maud? In... No, 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 no I'm think way so. out. He may have been a junior minister. Oh, right, OK. Who used to be our MP in Bristol North? William Five Walgrave. William Walgrave. He was a junior minister. Yeah. He was a Foreign Office minister. Yeah. Under William Hague. Uh -huh. No, not under William Hague. Under Margaret under... Thatcher. But, yeah, anyway. Um, ooh, yeah. But was he... He could have been in John Major's government, you say. OK, so she was... What was her her term? Her term of office? Yeah. That's not going to help, I don't think. Um, 1979 no. to 1990. Right. OK, we've got oh. two possible names there. Anything oh, else? We need something vague. Yeah. I think that's the point of the game, isn't it? Yes. We don't want to get too many no. points here. Uh, come on, let's keep going. Keep rolling. Um... Tebbit, obviously, is too, too obvious. Five seconds. Too obvious. Yeah, yeah. OK, uh, I think we're going to end up with more than OK, your time is up. We were looking for members of Margaret Thatcher's cabinets. I now need your three answers. Norman. Norman St. John Stevens. Norman St. John Stevens. Um, we'll keep Willie Walgrave in the bag. He's our ace yeah. in the hole. Lord Young. Lord Young. Yeah. yeah. So, Lord Young, mm -hmm. William Walgrave... Yeah. And Norman St. John Stevens. Yes. Of those three, who do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Do you think Willie Wardgrave? Willie or... Wardgrave, I think, would go number three. OK, Wardgrave will put line. last. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who shall we put first? Who's your least likely? Lord Young, because mm -hmm. uh, Lord I don't Young. think he was. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's put those up on the board in the order you have ordained. Here they are Lord Young, Norman St. John Stevens, and William Wardgrave. There they are. We were looking for members of Mrs Thatcher's cabinets. These are your three answers. This was your least confident answer. You only need one mm -hmm. of these to be pointless mm -hmm. to win that jackpot of £10,750. Your first answer is Lord Young. Let's see if this is right. Let's see if Lord Young was indeed a member of a Mrs Thatcher cabinet. And if he was, let's see how many people said him. This has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. £10,750. Good luck. It's right. There he is. He has to go all the way down to zero if you're going to win that jackpot of £10,750. Still going down. Oh! <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Well, that was close. That was very close, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a pointless answer, though. <laughs> You now have only two more chances to win today's jackpot. We are looking for members of Mrs Thatcher's cabinets. Your next answer, Norman St John Stevens, which you came up with very quickly. How confident are you about that? Not that I think people would remember. It's such a funny yeah. name. It mm. is, yeah. 
What would you do with £10,750? Well, we've planned a trip to Eastern Europe, so we would blow a fair bit on that. But I think we want to go to Madagascar, ideally, don't we? Mm -hmm. And um, Antarctica. And or. Antarctica. Very good. We're two questions away. Is Norman St. John Stevens correct? And if it is, how many people said it? Norman St. John Stevens. Wow, well, it's right. Lord Young went all the way down to one. Norman St. John Stevens, you had a bit more faith in. Let's see how far he's going to take you. Down he goes. Single figures. Still going down. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's two very, very close calls. Yes. You have been a hair's breadth away from £10,750 twice now. Uh. But this was your most confident answer. Your yeah. ace in the hole. Wow. Well, mm, so your sure. politician. Yeah. yeah. Your own MP. This was your most confident answer. William Wargrave. This has to go all the way down to zero if you're going to win that jackpot of £10,750. Takes me nearly five seconds to say that massive amount of money. <laughs> William Wargrave, is it right? If it is, how many people said it? It's right. Oh. It's right. We've been down to one with Lord Young. We've been down to one with Norman St. John Stevens. This has to go all the way down to zero for William Wargrave. Is it going to win you the jackpot? Yes, it is! <laughs> That's superb. <laughs> Very well done. Come on. Oh, God! <laughs> Very good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Wow. Wow, well, congratulations. Core blimey, you managed to find that all-important, pointless answer, which means you go home with our jackpot of £10,750. <laughs> Richard, what about that? Uh, yeah, and by the skin of your teeth as well. William Wardgrave was Secretary of Health literally in the dying days of, uh, of, of Thatcher's reign. I mean, literally days as well. And uh, oh. it must have been <laughs> those, those been days have won you £10,750, oh. which is very good for your health. Let's take a look at some more pointless answers, because I know lots of people at home will have got uh, a pointless answer on this one. Let's take a look. John Selwyn Gummer, a pointless answer, as was Lord Carrington and Lord Hailsham, three fairly big hitters there. Uh, Lord Havers, Nigel Havers' father, Michael Jopling, Nicholas Ridley. No one can remember any of these. Paul Channon, Tom King, and there's William Waldegrave, and somebody remembered him. <laughs> very, very good. Well, thanks again to our winning players, Paul and Yvonne, who go away with the jackpot of £10,750. Very well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Join us next time and we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>